Today is July the 3rd, 2009. We've done quite a number of different discussions upon the subject of Israel and the Jews and the different terminologies used in the Bible as it relates to um, the Israelites and the synagogue of Satan and Jesuits and Judaism and tried to explain how that that whole subject is really twisted especially within dispensational theology Mark wanted to further explore tonight a subject called Israel Israel we talked about Israel and the statehood of Israel and how that if you're endorsing the statehood of Israel you're actually in blasphemy against God himself because those people that are running the statehood of Israel are the most anti-Christian blasphemous people you would ever meet in your life they are of the synagogue of Satan they're of the Rothschild family and the Rockefeller family who are involved in the Illuminati and uh, the worship of Satan child sacrifice and everything else Mark has another discussion he wanted to do called Satanist and I was encouraging him that how these would all be able to be lumped together in discussion how that the Illuminati and the synagogue of Satan are Satan worshippers and it's really important to realize that many of the this is a matter of history folks a number of our founding fathers were even into child sacrifice now you can bury your head in the sand they were even caught at it they were never charged but these kind of things run prevalent in the Masonic Lodge and the Illuminati and so the Israel Israel, the state of Israel, the Zionists, uh, you can't separate out the Zionists from those that are involved in, in the occult and high level witchcraft. And, um, you know, the pentagram is a five star. Have you ever noticed, have you ever just in your travel seen all these stars going up on buildings? And, you say, oh, it's just for decoration. It's just for decoration. I noticed recently Sarah Palin had on her lapel a five star. I guess it was just for decoration. Now, we need to be aware and cognizant of what's going on around us in our society. Now, how does the Israel, how does it interrelate with the Muslim faith? Well, I can tell you that it doesn't matter what country or what religion, world religion, apart from Christianity, you're talking about. Those at the highest levels are interrelating and interfacing with each other because they're a part of Satan's kingdom. They're a part of um, this facade that's being put up now I can give you one example and that is Pope Benedict Pope Benedict of of course the Roman Catholic Church has made statements about Allah and how all of Allah is deserving of our worship now here's a guy that's supposed to be a Christian We, we know that's not the case but He calls himself a Christian, but yet he is exalting Allah. The New World religions want to bring everything together, I've said this many times, under one umbrella, and that includes the statehood of Israel and the Muslims and the Palestinian state, and we know that the Illuminati has been guilty of funding both sides of wars for years to create chaos if they can create enough chaos then they can come in with a solution and gain control economic control 
over governments and over countries and over nations. And that's exactly what they've done. Now, we know that God is sovereign over all of this evil. We know that. We know that God is sovereign over Satan. This Mark was telling me about when he was for what, junior high? Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, high school then. High school. Yeah. And how that there was a fellow there. Now was he of the Jewish race or was Yeah, he 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 was into thinking he was into the you know, Jewish race. Right, but what was what was the problem with him? He was a Satanist. How do you know he was a Satanist? He had a necklace on, the devil's head on it. Did you ever talk to him, or did you ever say anything about his belief? Yeah, he said he was a Satanist. He said he was a Satanist, right out in the open about it, huh? Yeah. And did he talk about why or how or anything about his 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 worship of Satan? He was. He just said he just talked about Anton LaVey and stuff. Oh, he did. Yeah. You know, folks, if you don't know what Anton LaVey is, was the I don't think he's still living, but he was the the high priest of Satan Church, and he actually castrated his son for not uh, participating in the areas of Satan worship that he wanted his son to do. His son became a Christian but I think he ended up getting killed but um, you know there's no such thing as white witchcraft a lot of people say well that's just innocent white white witchery no there's nothing innocent of innocence about getting involved in the occult that's why it's so dangerous when you go into churches and they're promoting C.S. Lewis I recently saw a church that now that calls themselves reformed that in their junior high church they're discussing the screw tape letters. I understand C.S. Lewis was very involved in the occult, folks. Now, if you want to play around with it, I mean, it's dangerous because you're opening yourself up to satanic influence. Now, the other thing that we have to realize is that there's only one true way Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Christianity is the most exclusive religion on the face of the earth, and that includes comparing it to the Muslim religion. Christianity's leader says that I am the way. He affirmed that he was the Son of God. That's why Satan hates Christianity so much. Satan likes to deceive people on all the other religions thinking that the all paths lead to God but all paths lead to Satan apart from Jesus Christ who leads to God so the Israel the state of Israel over there we've talked about this so many times about John Hagee and how he said that Jesus Christ did not come for the Jews as their Messiah <clears throat> and we know and there's quite a number of people that are now um, saying that you don't even have to know Christ to get to heaven. And the Bible tells us if we climb up some other way, we're a thief and a robber. Grace, grace, marvelous grace. <clears throat> That's the only way that anyone gains eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord is through the grace of God none of us merit his favor we all deserve damnation and death but we have to be cognizant of the evil forces around us I was talking to someone today and we were talking about how people stick their heads down in the sand they don't even want to know what's going on they just want to just ignore it you know, I've talked about this before, how <clears throat> certain people uh, say, I don't, you know, I believe a certain way and, and they don't want to hear the Bible. They don't want to hear the Bible read to them. Well, you know, and we've talked about these issues many, many times. The state of Israel, the, the 1967 war was created by the 
international banking community. It had nothing to do with uh, the Israel of God. It had to do with reprobates that were blaspheming God. And this whole false statehood of Israel is nothing more than a facade, this reinstituting of animal sacrifice, this going back in the Jewish law and and uh, having the Passover and, and celebrating all of these Jewish holidays is nothing more than what Paul was fighting in Galatia. And we've talked about this before. And we've talked about how that <clears throat> Satan has got a lot of people deceived to thinking that this statehood of Israel is God's miraculous intervention of returning people to their homeland and all kind of crazy stuff. Let me tell you something. Go back and study the book of Romans. Romans says that he's not a Jew, he's one outwardly, but inwardly circumcision of the heart. Now there is going to be coming into fulfillment the, the, the fulfillment of the, the the time of the Gentiles that's come into fruition very closely, I believe. And there is going to be a remnant of the Jews that are saved according to the election of grace. Paul said in Romans there were 7,000 that have not yet bowed the knee to Baal. That is the Jews. That is the elect Jews of God. The chosen ones. But yet, we cannot uh, endorse what the reprobate Jews are promoting which is the absolute uh, blasphemy of God. Look at the Jews in the United States. As a general rule, most of them are advocates of even up to partial birth abortion. Most of them are advocates of homosexuality. They absolutely hate virginity. They hate they they hate the Gentiles. They call the Gentiles Goyim. They study the Talmud, which came along after Christ uh, was on the earth here. And they people say, well, but they read the Torah. The Talmud takes precedence over the Torah, as well as the Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah is a very occultic document. The Talmud makes very, very derogatory statements about Gentiles, calls them Goyim, which is derogatory in itself. They have two sets of laws. They have a law for the Jews and a law for everybody else. They they don't think that the, they should have to come under uh, the same law as it relates to the Goyim as the Goyim comes under for them. This is not justice or equality or non-discrimination. It's the most discriminatory uh, group on the face of the earth. Martin Luther wrote a book called The Jews and Their Lives. I would recommend that you get that book and read it. The Talmud is a lie. The Kabbalah is a lie. It has nothing to do with the Bible. The Kabbalah is satanic as well as the Talmud. It's against Christ and against His Word. It mocks the very Word of God. Israel, People say, well, Israel is one of our great biggest allies. We're one of the biggest allies of Israel. Well, let me tell you something. You want to be allied with abortionists? 
Do you want to be allied with people that are promoting homosexuality? You're no different than our president then. I heard uh, John MacArthur say today, make a big case for even evil governments we're supposed to um, support because God put those governments in office. No, we are not. Let me say something. We're supposed to speak against evil governments that go against God's law, John MacArthur. Why do you think Moses went in front of Pharaoh and said, let my people go that they may worship me? Why do you think that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed? Why do you think that there were kings uh, that were destroyed all the way through the Old Testament by the Israelites? And their their groves were torn down, and the high places were torn down. If your logic, John MacArthur, is true, then you are supporting abortion and homosexuality because our government is supporting it. It's the most asinine thing I've ever heard of. The misinterpretation of that chapter of Romans. If I had taken your position, I would have placed children in homosexual foster homes because I was working for the government. You said, well, that's what prophecies are for. We are supposed to come against them in prophetic utterances. Sometimes we need to take a stand against evil governments. And uh, so you want to get me going on that, we can get going on that one. Prophets or prophets, prophets or false prophets prophesy smooth things because it's politically correct to say that. We are not supposed to be standing up for evil governments that are coming blatantly against God's Word. And we're not supposed to be endorsing those governments. And uh, anyway, people don't want to get in trouble with the government. Just like Jeremiah, you know, they didn't like him very well. They don't like prophets that prophesy against uh, these evil workers of iniquity. Now, I think that our country is on the verge of going into a uh, beginning that will begin to persecute true Christians at an alarming rate, and I think it will be swept under the rug by most churches because most churches will say well it was their own fault just like John MacArthur was putting out there today on that message I heard today they weren't coming under the authority of the government let me tell you something are you supposed to allow your conscience to be bound when people are absolutely killing and taking part in infanticide and homosexuality and you're not supposed to say anything against it and that's exactly what happened in Nazi Germany. People were killing Jews in the Holocaust while they were singing in their churches. The occultist Hitler, who, by the way, had roots in and his family were Jewish, but he was a practicing Satanist. And you can do the history on that. And uh, you'll find that there's a lot of people in our government leadership today who are practicing Satanists and involved in the Illuminati. Yeah, people say, oh, Larry's been listening to Alex Jones again. I don't have to listen to Alex Jones. All you have to do is listen to people like George Bush get up and talk about on the National Prayer Day of Prayer that that we all worship the same God. Muslims and all faiths worship the same God. All you have to do is get on Shirley Dobson's website and see in the National Day of Prayer website that all faiths are welcome and the fact that it is uh, of all religions, for all religions and all faiths. That is not the God of the Bible. It has nothing to do with the God of the Bible. 
And when somebody gets up and starts talking about Judeo-Christian, uh, our Judeo-Christian religion, our Judeo-Christian nation, Judaism has nothing to do with Christianity. Judaism is the furthest thing from Christianity that you could you could ever get. It's preposterous. You know, and so I get my air up a little bit when I start thinking about all the lies, the lies that are perpetrated. And these people just, like sheeple people, go right along with it, hook, line, and sinker. I'm sure the people that were listening to that John MacArthur today were taking what he was saying, hook, line, and sinker about civil government and not taking a stand against civil government and just going along with them because the presupposition was, well, God's the one that raised these evil people up. So what? If God allows evil uh, forces to come up and, and become in, in kingship but, uh, because of judgment upon our nation, we're still to take a stand against evil. We're not to go along with it. And that was the inference that MacArthur made in his message. Shame on you, John MacArthur. We're going that route. Well, anyway, that's my thinking today, and we have to realize also that we're living in a nation where the religious leaders that are in the limelight want to be accepted. They don't want to uh, be considered bigots or hate mongers or the people that are preaching out of the Bible. Now, he was actually taking a passage out of Jeremiah. And I'm not saying a person shouldn't pay their taxes and tribute to the government. I'm not saying that at all. But let me ask you a question, okay, Mr. MacArthur? Let me ask you a question. If what you're saying is true, why, would, why did America ever uh, have a revolution against the mother country uh, England, if that if your logic is correct, why was there ever a rebellion uh, against England in the first place? If if it was founded on Christian um, as a Christian nation, as you set forth, let me tell you something. Um, we have to deal with our individual consciences. I found that firsthand when I had a position in the state of Missouri and I was told to do something by my government that went against my conscience. Martin Luther had to come against the Roman Catholic government that was in power, if you recall, in Germany at the time. And, he, and Martin Luther said, Here I stand. And yet we want to say that he was a great ushering in of the Protestant Reformation, but he came against the government at that time, which was the Roman Catholic Church. With his 95 theses on the Wittenberg door. Have we forgotten history? Have we forgotten these things? John Calvin came against the Roman Catholic government and started the Reformation in Switzerland and actually formed a reformed government there coming against the very thing that you say we should uphold. Well, I can see signs of people starting to uh, renege on their original stand against even Roman Catholicism by their presuppositions and so on. No wonder. No wonder they're trying to have dialogue with people like uh, Colson, Chuck Colson, and uh, uh, J.I. Packer. You can't have dialogue with people like Chuck Colson and J.I. Packer who have turned their face right in and against the Word of God. Well, Mark, you probably didn't know you were going to get me so going on this, but um, I've covered a lot of ground 
I want you to look up a passage of Scripture for me in Romans there. We're going to just read through this. I don't think we can emphasize this too much, that um, there is a totally uh, wrong uh, interpretation of the 13th chapter of Romans. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. It doesn't stop there, though, John MacArthur. It says, there is no power but God. The powers that be are ordained of God. And that includes the people taking a stand against evil as well. Whosoever resisted the power, that the <laughs> resisting the power includes God Almighty those resisting God Almighty. He is the supreme power. And they that resist shall receive in themselves damnation. Okay, read verse 3. The rulers are not cared to do good works, but to be evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Doing that which is good is not endorsing evil, John MacArthur. Doing that which is good is not endorsing evil. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. Now how in the world can the government be a minister of God for good when they're killing babies and they're practicing and endorsing homosexuality which God showered down uh, what, what did he shower down on Sodom and Gomorrah? What did he shower down? Fire and, brim. Fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake, John MacArthur. Conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute all tribute also for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing we are not against paying taxes to governments we never have been never will be but it says here render them to all their dues tribute to whom give tribute is due custom to whom custom is due fear to whom fear to whom honor to whom honor is due I do not honor Barack and St. Obama I do not honor him He's blasphemous. He's shaking his fist in the face of God Almighty. And if you're going to honor someone that is promoting infanticide and perversion, you have a totally misunderstanding of the Bible, my friend. Okay. So, he goes on down, and what does he say in 9? For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill... Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Our president is promoting murder. Our president is promoting perversion. Here it says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Our president is promoting ill to his neighbor. So, I wanted to make sure that, and then it goes on in the last verse says, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Barack Obama is making provision for the, fe for the lust of the fe flesh to fulfill the lust thereof by reinforcing homosexuality in our military and by making uh, originating hate crimes legislation against anyone who preaches against it. I'll tell you what. Somebody needs to have a heart-to-heart -heart with people like John MacArthur and these people that are promoting these lies. We need to take a stand against evil even if it means against our president. Father, we pray that you would open John MacArthur's eyes and some of these other people who are putting out this rubbish about how that we're supposed to give honor to someone who is absolutely going blatantly against your law and against your word. Open our eyes, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.